wrong opening again. What can I say? You win some, you lose some. You win some, and you lose some. I know I opened the right one. I remember doing it. So I think I know what the problem is. Oh, well, okay. So what I want to know is, is there an echo for you guys? No, it doesn't. All right. So when you're talking, you don't hear an echo or everything is okay? Correct. Excellent. That means I don't have to wear a headset. Oh. Zoom is taking care of it for me. That's pretty cool because my speakers are just on and I can hear them. And I can hear everybody just fine and I don't have to have these things in all the time. Okay. Anyway. The connection seems a little choppy. The audio? The or video. The video? Mm -hmm. it looks smooth here. How's it look to everybody else? Uh, you like you are definitely figures? lower resolution than normal, yes. Uh, I don't know. Not sure why. All I can say is it looks fine over here. At least well, on the and you always get the direct, you know, Zoom will always show you a direct feed from your camera, not what it's showing to everybody else. Right, but then I've got the actual Zoom feed over oh, here. All right, yeah. Yeah, you're just you're just uh, just from my end. You're looking a little uh, more granulated than you usually are. <laughs> Whatever. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Technical stuff. John is made of sugar cubes today. There look like what we look like. <laughs> sugar cubes. I don't know. It's looking okay over no, here. No, sorry. Again, I was, tiny, I was, uh, tiny, I was being a bit screen. hyperbolic there. Oh, sorry. Anyway, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live. This is the Clarion Live open webinar. And today is uh, Wednesday, the 9th of August. Is that right? 2023. With me today is my technical crew here who makes sure that everything sounds and looks correct. And apparently it doesn't. So there's, it's not the best crew. But no, we got to have no control. We just, <laughs> Absolutely stop. no control. We, just, we can just give you feedback. That's all we can do, John. I'm getting echo. I'm getting are you, are Yeah, I'm getting weird sound now. now but then is all that, of is you that coming are... from me, possibly? Oh. Weird. Strange. Okay, why well, change be. the setting? Is it going to get any better? I, I will disconnect and reconnect because it seems like it does it whenever I speak. So. Well, I can I, try. I can plug in. It could that's be okay in. there. I think it was going from Mike. When Mike well, spoke. yeah, and like I said, when I spoke, oh, that's when I heard fine. it as well. But now it's fine, so maybe Zoom has figured it out. Well, there's two settings on Zoom for my uh, audio, and I just changed it to the noise canceling one, so that okay. you take care of it. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. We're going to get through this. We do have a question. <laughs> Today's question and answer day. Um, and if you have a question, put it in the questions box. And if you don't have any questions, then we go away. And uh, Mike Gorman has a question. And Mike, talk I'm to us. Guessing, I'm guessing it's a template question, but it might be something else. Let's see what it is. <laughs> the hand is up. Mike, talk to us. Yeah, say something. Can't hear him. Microphone, he's unmuted. Everything's looking good on our side. Oh yes. Well I don't I don't know. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, to be continued. <laughs> be continued. He says he may have to restart or start something. Yeah. Might try uh, un unplugging your headset and plugging it back in. Sometimes that takes care of the problem if it's USB set. Oh, I definitely went well today, Phil Farrell. Doing great. <laughs> Never you know, better. Different question from Peter. Okay, well, let's do that one. Oh, he says it's difficult to describe. That's his way of getting out of typing in the question so that we can log it. I don't know, what should we do? Oh, he says he'll type it once we start talking. All right. Uh, All right. Uh, okay, well, we'll see. We'll hold him to that. We'll trust you on that one. 
let's see. Is anybody opening him up? I do. Here, I got him. Okay. <laughs> How to talk. Hi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and thank you for trusting me. I will type it in when I know how to phrase the question. Okay. Um, I've talked with you on and off about this white window of death that my that one of my systems gets from time to time. And with any luck, you've blocked it all out from the past. So I'll state it again. It's an intermittent problem that happens when the print preview closes. I get this white screen that's a screen, that's a window that says runtime error and everything locks up. What does the error actually say? I'm sorry? What does the error actually say? The, the window is blank except for a banner that says runtime error. And it's, that's it. <laughs> that's it's <clears throat> it's absolutely maddening. And I know maybe I am crazy and maybe everybody knows I'm crazy, but that's what happens. And I've submitted images of it on the, the various chats from time to time. I'll leave that as it is. Which preview are you using? The one that comes from Clarion, from SV. Hmm. Now, I have this odd idea that I fixed it. And this is the situation I had before and what I've done to change it. I have an include file that describes a group type. Within that group type, there are there's a reference to another group type, and there's a reference to a Q type. And there are a bunch of equates that I need to process stuff. The procedure that's giving me the trouble um, has the include file declared, but it never references the group type or the Q types. It only uses the equates. It calls a second procedure, which does use the group type, the Q types, and the equates. And when the called procedure closes, that's when I get the error in the calling program. The C11 log.txt is showing me that it's dying in the called, in the calling program, not the called program. So what I did was to change the include file to remove the group and Q references and separate out the equates that the calling program needs. Now the calling program only has the equates, not the reference to the Q. The called program has the reference to the group and the Q. It calls them, it closes, the crash went away. I was getting the hard crash during uh, creating this new program that gets called to print some stuff that uses the group type and the Q types. So what I'm wondering is, is it possible that the calling program, even though it's not using the, uh, the group type and the Q type, but because it was declared is crashing. When the called program, um, disposes of the Q type references that are in the group. By removing the group description from the include file in the calling program and only leaving it in the called program, I seem to have fixed the problem. Does that make any sense to you? A tiny bit, but a, a whole lot of big question marks <laughs> as far as okay. what, what is going on it. where. <laughs> yeah. um, the thing is, I've, I had a hard error until I made this change, and I haven't had the error since I made the change. So, so, so one thing to point out before we mm -hmm. get into the end is the concept of like a group with a type parameter or a queue with a type parameter is nothing but a description. It is not real code. 
right. It okay. has no bearing on the world. All just saying is, hey, everybody, for us to be able to communicate, we're going to be talking about a thing that's going to look like this. And then yes. it's not until you actually instantiate that thing that it's so you could have types defined all over the place. Doesn't matter if you if, until you actually come to say, now I want to create an instance of this thing somewhere, and you knew it and assign a reference, and then later on you have to dispose of it. And, and uh, uh, yes, that's yeah. it exactly. In order for two programs to communicate, there has to be a third thing that they yeah. both see. Yeah. Yeah. Now, exactly. in that third thing they both see, if the first guy sees it but doesn't use it. The second guy uses it, instantiates it, disposes of it, and goes back to the first guy. Does the first guy have a problem? Doesn't care. Because it's just like, yeah, let me tell you that there's a balloon in the sky. Okay, fine. I don't care about the balloon. I'm not touching it. I'm not doing anything to it. You told me it, there might be a balloon in the sky. But do you know that he's not touching it? Yes. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Because I'll say it is purely a description and nothing else. It, that that group type is harmless if it's not doing anything with okay. it. Okay, I'm going to create an example for this and uh, present it at a future open webinar and uh, see if I can prove this stupidity and maybe it's something else that's well, going yeah, on. Yeah, my, my guess is that. is that you're is that you're sort of you're smelling something that seems like it's uh, related to that. But and you're and you may be close to where it's actually causing the failure. Gotcha. But, but my guess is the thing you're blaming is not really the thing. Okay. And this is the, this is the old old adage of I, I find that you, you poke it with a stick and you go there. It seemed to change it. That must be the cause. When in reality you just moved stuff around a little bit. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll leave it at that for now. There, there's right. nothing else to say. Thank you. Good. Good. Right, is Mike back? I have his question. It's an email. He sent it an email, and I, I think I, I see the answer. <laughs> so, okay, this is, it's it. a template. It's a template quiz. Is, is this uh, like a clairvoyant thing, where it's like, I, I sense the answer. There's something in the room, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I, I think I got this one actually. Let's, uh, I'll share my screen just a sec. Let me get a blank page up here. Hopefully Mike is here to appreciate it. Uh, he seems to be still here. He's just, yeah. he's just come back up. Well, this is, uh, hold on. When I pasted it, put lines, F, like lines everywhere. Good. <laughs> we're, we're not seeing a screen. I know. Give me one Good. second. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. As long as you know. You do know. Okay, uh, let's get a screen up here. Okay, so um, here's okay. the problem down here. It says if he uncomments the four comment lines, then the line or of MSSQL has an error marker underneath the string or of. Can you spot the error? Or should I just tell you what I thought the error might be? If he uncomments these four lines, he gets an error oh, right, let, right here. Right here. You, you, oh. you can't do four of MS SQL underneath that. Yeah, well, that's so what, yeah, that's of, one, yeah, exactly. It has to be of another metaverse of or of Mayor Mimer, but the next yeah. one then has to be an of. Yeah. Now I should mention if okay. this were regular Clarion or of different, would be but let's acceptable. not let's not get in the track. templates. It's not. Yes, yeah. I, I think you're uh, correct. I think you've spoken. Okay, I see what it is. Right. So line right. seventeen can't be or of. Must be of. So you're saying it should be like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it should be like that. Although this fundamentally looks wrong to me, looking at this code, like I can't imagine how this case structure is doing. Let's generate a case, yeah. It's metabase or mimer, then do this. Is this in all other cases do something different or is, is he planning yeah, on that's fleshing the, that's this out the, further? That's the point. Every every one of these is going to be generating a different well, just set you, or okay. something different in here, I guess. Okay. But then, that, then it should be a all, bunch of ofs. Of, 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 yeah. of, yeah. Just pound up, pound up, pound up, and no ors at all. No, no, no. That first one could be an oh, or. I don't know. I don't know what he wants uh, to do. Because if both of these, if both Metabase and Mimer need that chunk of code, 
but then each of the I'd following like ones needs a different chunk, then each of them is going to be separate. I like that. Yeah, but there's Unless a create index. The same. Yeah. There's a create index underneath, so who, who gets yeah. to create the index? I don't know where which, that which, from. And, and maybe which it should be an else elements? instead of an or of. Create index. if Mike is, yeah. Maybe yeah, that's Mike just generated code. code there. Okay, so let's generate uh, code. This is generated code. So he's doing a set and then a create here. I just want the code uh, yeah, for five okay. only. What is this though? Pound if there's no, your pound L, cycle there's no here? end. There's no end to the case statement, which is not helpful. Where's Mike? That's just saying that if if he's if this is a, a foreign key, is it pound end? Right? If it's what an F, it? F key, then it's saying it's going to loop up to the top of the four, up above, because this is part of a four n key. So he maybe says, "Hey, if this happens to be called, happens to have this F key thing, then I want to immediately stop going through my keys." In the case of MetaBase and Mimer, yeah, I, I think the key here is I don't, I don't know what he wants, and he's saying Mike, he you just need to wants tell us um, what you want. Yeah, he just wants okay. it for the Mimer okay. alone. In the chat yeah. alone, okay. Yeah, then remove all the rest. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I would okay. just get rid so of all those other. Hobbies. It wouldn't be an end of at the bottom. That end case on twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. End case, yeah. yeah. End case, though, yeah. yeah. I haven't used cases and templates like ever. Hmm. Okay, so get rid of all the or ofs, basically. End case down here, and then... And then ultimately, if you got a, a bunch of blank ofs, why in the heck do you have them at all? Well, because he got here, and then he was going to fill the rest in, but he yeah, got the error. And that, so. Sure, okay. And if there actually is a, different code in each of those cases. But. Yeah, the yeah, intentions to do it, then yeah. you put them in, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. That would be my, my suspicion anyway. That last one should be an of instead of an or of. Anything like that. Okay. Unless there are situations, depending upon certain, you know, for example, let's say Oracle and DB2 are being treated the same way, then it would be an or of. Of course. No. Yeah. Oh, right. right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, in his chat, he says correct. And then something about some of this being Roberto's code. So, okay. He's blaming someone else. Uh, okay. Well, I, I know. Roberto. He's not blaming He's, someone He's a bit else. of a He's troublemaker. Just... <laughs> He's just referencing that, that, that that's for his code. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we can't hear you, Mike, but I hope that answered your question or at least give it a go. Let us know what happens. Excellent. Danielle yeah. has a question. We're going to take network questions today because there's no network question webinar tomorrow. That's just the Hello, way. everybody. Hey, Danielle. Hello, Danielle. Nice to see you guys on a Wednesday for a change. I know we always hear there's no change. I'm not here on a Wednesday usually. <laughs> ah, <laughs> for a change. Yes, what's your point? For a change. Um, I have a question about NetTalk. Um, if I can show you my screen, please. Uh, yes. So I'm using the NetTalk um, web. Yeah. Oh, that's good. We lost it. Oh, yeah. did it get quiet for everybody? Just sharing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, she, okay. I see. Okay. Concentrating. I see what happened. It's on the wrong screen. Never mind. I will move my stuff across. I don't know which screen I'm on. All right, you should be able to see my Clarion that's open. Yep, we can okay. see your no JFLs caps off com JFLs code. What do you? There's your clarin. No, yes, I'm seeing your clarin. Oh yeah. Okay. So um, this is already working as it is at the moment. Um, I have a series of variables that are being passed into my API, um, including a whole lot of information regarding to the beneficiaries. Um, I need to now change it to be able to accept more than one beneficiary, where previously it was only able to receive one beneficiary. So. What is the JSON like? Okay, so that is the previous one. I've now changed this to try and, and Daniel, use Daniel. an array. What What does yes. the JSON look like? So the JSON, um, 
I, I've been playing around with the JSON because based on what I've read in the and, and looked at in the news groups yesterday, um, it said I needed to use an element group rather than just individual variables, which is the way I had it set up. Um, but this is how I've got it set up now. This is the JSON receiving two beneficiaries in this case. So that's okay, what the that JSON looks that JSON's, like. that JSON's not going to work in Network 12. It will work in Network 14, but it won't work in Network 12. Um, if you want if you want to do it in Network 12, you must you mustn't have a group of you must have a queue inside a group. You must have a queue by itself and you can have other fields by themselves. Okay. So previously my code looked like this. So it, there are my locals um, and there is, so it's not inside a group. There is my beneficiary, my array. So this is my original code. Before I used okay. your J files to code thing that changed it to have the element okay. group. So th this JSON would be fine, yes. Okay. So this is my original JSON. But I'm having a problem now doing this beneficiary array or queue, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, I have left my locals loose, so they're not in a group. And then there is my queue. Okay, show us the API. What do you want to see on the API? Yeah, they go, go into that key. Come back to parameters. Back to parameters. I, I don't know where I'm supposed to be going. I don't, uh, you went so quickly, it didn't, unfortunately didn't refresh the screen. Uh, yes, go properties of the beneficiaries queue, right? Yeah, record boundary now quotes is fine, cool. Okay. I I have tried specifying the fields here, but I don't know if I need to. I, I actually don't know what I'm doing here. I, okay, I so let's look at your let's queue. look at your date. Well, it's there. Data so pad. let's go to your data pad here, yeah, and let's look okay. at the key declaration. All right. So, um, I, based on what I've read in the news groups. I've um, declared a, a type queue. No, oh, no, you didn't need to do that. You could have just created a queue in your local data pad. There is my type queue. Yeah, See, no, you made this. I don't no, know if you, you go back to the examples. The examples go back to 2017, which is really old stuff. So. Yeah. Don't always know what so is still relevant and not relevant anymore. Okay, a couple, couple of things playing going on here. Um, the first is that you've got um, lock in front of all the names, which is not helpful. So you can take all that out. Um, where you, you see on all the field names, you put lock colon uh, in understand. front of all of them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, take all of that out. Take the word, word type away. Um, you mean up here? And then yeah, go ahead, take it away. No, no, no. Yeah, take that away. And take away type. It says comma type on that line. Yeah. Okay. And then lose all the lock colons. I'm not worried about that right now because those are just variable no, names. No. Right. Well, take them away. Okay, then on each one, put a common name attribute on it. Okay. Because your JSON is case sensitive, right? Yeah. So you need to put the name and I'm in. going to use mixed case as it is there now. Yeah. I will clean all of this up nicely later when I'm not on everybody else's time. The last variable I have in this queue is called hyperlink. Is that a reserved word or can I use that? You can use that. 
Okay. I think Jason has no reserved, or yeah, Jason has no reserved words that uh, I can think of. Yeah. No, okay. All righty. Okay. And then in your local data pad, you've got beneficiaries. At least I presume, there, yeah, yeah, you do. There we go. Just delete that. I said delete that. that. Okay. Good, yeah. right. Um, you could copy this queue to your, to your data pad. Data pad if you wanted to. But or leave it here. Need I to probably will do that later, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So take take that name, beneficiaries queue, and let's go back to your parameters. No, no, just okay. the word, beneficiaries queue. Yep. No, 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 not the whole thing. No, listen, not the whole thing. Just the word at the top. Yeah, that's what four. she's got. Yeah, you, your, your screen is not refreshing nearly as quick as she's doing it. Okay. I'm miles behind then. Uh, yeah, you don't really need a name there. Um, go to the parameters and change the parameters to beneficiaries queue. Right, got it. There we go. It, Leave it, the record boundary alone. It doesn't like it because it it's doesn't not in like the... It doesn't like this because it's not in my data pad. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then move it across your data pad. So I'm going to just quickly do that. I'm sorry about the dog barking, but my family's just gotten home. Sure. Blame your family. <laughs> You're going to have to comment that uh, or, or delete it. Yeah, so that's the other option. Okay, good. That's all fine. All right, I'm going back into the parameter screen. Okay, and all righty, there we go. Okay, I'll wait for it to refresh. Is that the actual no, no, record no, no, boundary no. in the JSON. Record I think it's just supposed to be beneficiaries. beneficiaries. Yeah, that's, that's what she's looking it, for in the JSON. It's in the called JSON. beneficiaries. But I've called it beneficiaries queue. No, no, in no, the JSON. In no, well, let's see the JSON. Yeah, I don't remember it saying Banner History's queue, but maybe it did. Show us the JSON um, again. Are we referring to the data pad? No, no, the no, actual JSON. No, we're referring to the JSON. The JSON, the JSON. You showed uh, us okay. some JSON. There we go. Beneficiaries. Yes, it's beneficiaries. Yeah, yes, no okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. So that'll work. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think the external name matters for the queue itself. Oh, okay. Like it is harmless to put it in there, but it should be fine. Mm. Okay. I don't know if you caught up, but that that's all you need. That'll yeah, work. I think so. Now here's a question, Bruce. So I, I intrinsically dislike the data pad. I just find it's too much clickety clickety to try and put anything in. I just want to put it in source. Um, so in the situation where it's demanding that it be something in the data pad, could you just put a reference to the same queue type? Put the put the queue in source like Daniela had had, um, and then just have a reference to that queue uh, in your in your data pad, and then just use that in the uh, uh, in the uh, net talk settings would that work it's not necessary in network 14 you can put in anything names Perfect. Or anything Good. yeah lovely that's even better i like that it's even better you can put in you can put in locally defined stuff it's fine so you, did you just change it to expression instead of uh yeah yeah that's that's that changed a while back the yeah. um same for the return values it allows you to do hand-coded views and cues and okay. things like that cool Next slide, please. All right, so Bruce, how do I work with this now? It's a queue. The stuff will come into the queue. So, so, so under we'll, the prime parameters, I don't need no, no, to do no, 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 anything no, no. here with this. No, you don't do anything there. Where, where you do your service code, your service method code, where you got your code. Yeah. Go yeah. There. That would be here that I've commented it all out because I was having yeah. issues. I'm yeah. not seeing anything commented yet, but maybe I'm behind. It'll catch up. You're way behind, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. Your, the parameters will be in the queue. Okay, so, so I can now do a standard queue. loop through the queue and work with it 100% normal. Bingo. That's it. 
Okay, good. Well, I'll give that a try then. Thank you. Mm. I wasn't okay. sure because I don't see it doing anything in the prime parameters and things if there was something else I needed to do. No, no because it, you know, the, the J file stuff just does it automatically under okay, the covers. Wonderful. At least it should. There aren't, there aren't any covers, Mike. There aren't any covers. So uh, it's completely exposed. Uh, encapsulation is happening. <laughs> I have a feeling. <laughs> I have a feeling it's happening somewhere. <laughs> You're right. working at an All abstract right. level. Yeah. I will have a look at that and see if I come right. Thanks, guys. Cool. You're welcome. Thanks, Danielle. Good. Uh, I seem to be laggy today for some reason. <laughs> you are very laggy. Because I have talk question two. Um, Good, talk I, I, while while, uh, while we were working, I found out what the issue was. So oh, I you know. say you've sorted. There we go. It was yeah, my addiction there, right. there, so, but thank uh, you. Pleasure. All right. Uh, Peter wrote up his question for you, John, when you're done. I with see it, that. I'm it. very impressed and quite pleased. And that gives you a gold star for the day, Peter. <laughs> Not silver, but gold. Platinum. Can't what you. about platinum stars? Do we get platinum yeah. stars? I, I, only get stars. stars. I only get Peter didn't quite make platinum it. today, but... Gold. Not, only if it actually goes away. Well, I'm going to get an example ready. I'm going to make it break and make it fix. Thank you, though. Thanks very much. Pleasure, Peter. Mark, talk to me. Mike, we can't hear you, by the way. Mike Gorman. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Mark. So um, I am trying to do some discovery um, related to Microsoft SQL. I have a project that we have um, an availability group with a primary and a secondary SQL server lurking, and we're having some pain and agony when uh, failovers occur and looking to see who, uh, what gurus might be available that I could have some conversation with to understand how Clarion uh, maintains that connection or can recover from that connection without just putting up a nasty gram and having to restart my TFBO um, didn't Rick clearing out. do a thing on this at the last DevCon Rick did this exact subject I think if memory serves yep yeah, 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 yes, yeah, I, I think Rick might be a good guy to talk to Scott Ferret also is uh, is of course the, the guy uh, and it's funny because because he and I were chatting this morning and he was talking about this weird problem he discovered where sometimes we get a commit statement without a corresponding logout uh, and it's not the Clarion code that's not sending through the commit what's happening is that occasionally SQL server will just change, decide to for whatever reason create a new connection and uh, and if the driver doesn't tweak to that uh, then when the commit comes along, it's actually committing to a connection where that did not actually start the transaction. And what would need to happen is the driver would have to recognize that there is now this new connection and then would have to sort of do some magic to make sure that everything sure. gets worked properly. And my guess is that in, in the case of the database rollover, uh, the failover, it's probably creating a bunch of new connections. And, uh, and uh, I would assume that uh, the, the driver needs to recognize that those connections are new and deal with it accordingly. Sure. And and I'm suspecting that it won't automatically handle that, but it sounds like Rick is addressing it in some fashion. Maybe it's the same problem you've got. Maybe it's not. Uh, so <laughs> I would say talk to Rick first, and if Rick doesn't know the answer, then uh, at some point reach out to Scott. Cool. I will do that. And I'll uh, have a look at the last DevCon info. Um, thanks for thanks for the group memory. <laughs> it is greatly appreciated. Cool. Lovely. Well, there we go. Should we call it done? Oh, no more questions. I think so. I, it's, I'm just noticing like everybody is kind of a little jerky today on my end. It's because well, you're not using your headset, headset kind of like this. That's, that's what's going on. What is it? Because you're not, so not doing that. Oh, that's what it is? Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> If I do You're that, getting tracers? No, no, no. That's because of the acid you dropped earlier today, Bruce. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like, like when you did it there, Mike. You you jerked a lot. Really? I don't no, know if you jerked when you saw mine. 
Yeah, I, jerk, I think it's yeah. I think it's a Zoom thing today. It must be a Zoom. Maybe, yeah. Well, apparently Zoom is starting to listen to all of our conversations. And wants to wants to own them forever to, to program its AI. Yeah, good luck. Somebody with that. told me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the hosts so use like everybody. banter. Oh, so. Zoom has told everybody to come back to work and stop oh. using Zoom for Zoom. Zoom. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah, that too. Zoom is in the news That's lately it. for more things <laughs> than one. Yeah. Ed has Ed a trivia has, question. He does. Ed, why isn't everyone in alphabetical order today? Uh, where's Ed? Where's Ed? Where's Ed? Where is it? Yeah. There's only like five people here. No, there's more than that. But it's for some reason I can't. Hi. Everything's out of order. Hi, Hi, how's it going? How are you? Good. Yeah, not too bad. Good. Um, Andy, thanks for help. I it was I, I got everything going. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. But I do have a question. I'm trying, I'm doing some testing and I'm just trying to include a URL link in 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 the uh, in my test message and it's getting filtered out. And I'm not sure how to get around this. A URL in your text message. Just like, you know, go to this website, www.something.com. And it just gets filtered out and I can't get a success. You know, it sends it, but I'm not receiving it. Okay, two seconds. I want to try that exact test on the demo app. And I'm kind of reading on their website. and I don't know. It says something about like... Uh, Using a short URL, or I, you got to have some branded website. I, I'm not really sure. Has anybody done anything with that? I oh, don't send URLs through text messages. I send text messages, but not URLs, mm, yeah, as far I, as I know. I'm trying to think whether any of our stuff going out. No, we don't normally include, like, the, theoretically, anybody could put, uh, yeah, paste it into it to really a yeah. test. And, uh, you know, because in, in our system, you can actually go in and uh, specify whatever messages you want to go out. So I suppose I could always rig up some kind of test to do it. If you can, uh, uh, Ed, I'm going to do the, um, through the demo app, go ahead. Uh, the, the upgraded one. So I'm literally just going to try it. Here. Just compile it. won't be a sec. I think it's filtering being done by the carrier. But I'm not sure if Twilio has some feature to... They call it short code. No oh, sure. And then they refer no, to it coming from a branded website. I don't. I. I don't know what that means with them. Well, short code could that be like a like a tiny URL kind of thing? Yeah, like something like that. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, okay, right. But they use the term branded website. Do I have to register with them something? I don't know. Well, I know that I've got a client project that we are sending uh, URLs in text messages through Twilio. Um, okay. They have recently um, added some additional registration things um, in an effort to reduce mm -hmm. spam texts. Um, yeah. And so there is a registering where you're sending and uh, registering a campaign that has some information about why you're sending your texts and how the number, you know, the destination numbers are uh, opted in or collected. Um, and then you associate the message with or your phone number with that campaign in order to avoid um, extra charges from the carriers. Um, but I don't recall any special things we had to do with URLs um, in our text messages going out. Oh, I, be, I guess I should be contacting Twilio on this, right? Well, two seconds. Um, 39. I was going to do no, I'm just going to call. Are you, just, are you doing HTTP colon or just straightforward www? Whatever you want. I, I couldn't get it. I tried every combination. Oh, yeah, no, that's come. Cool. That's fine. They are sending uh, as I kind of would have expected. In fact, the Android phone has actually even brought up a little window saying, no, I'm stuck. Yeah, you should be fine. Uh, Yours is working? Within your, 
Mm, yeah, uh, let me quickly share just to um, speak so you can see what I'm actually doing. Maybe it's something in the US, I don't know. I was going to say maybe check your account because you're using, um, are you on here? Yeah, okay. So basically, um, yeah, 39. Uh, yeah, and I'll put an HTTPS. I've got, um, you can see the thing there. Oh, you can't, but yes, basically, <laughs> I'm getting them. And there it is, yeah, hello, 1939 with the URL. And it depends on your OS of your device. But yeah, it's put in, it's even giving me a little, um, you can't really see there, the web preview. All right, I'll give so, it another try. Yeah. So have a look at your Twilio setting, your, your account settings, see if there's any, anything in there. But yeah, that's absolutely, we'll try. Okay. Uh, do you have the URL you're trying? No, no, I've got BBC, and of course it's the home of the BBC, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's, there should really be no problem in sending it. It's just right. text. And if you're doing like bulk, let's say you were doing like, I don't know, let's say 5,000, would you break it up or just do a bulk send like that? Uh, I wouldn't use the single. I'd uh, do it via the yeah, queue. Yeah, using that, right. Yeah, yeah, use the queue. So, but it'll uh, work, right, with like many? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, do I have a... Uh, some demo data, don't I? Yeah, uh, that's only no, that that works that's exactly. If you, do a large, if you do a large quantity, you think it'll um, like, yeah, so many thousand. Um, see why it wouldn't. Can't say I've tried the so many thousand to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I think yes. Twilio's got some metering as to number of requests per second you can send. So you may have to watch that for just for timing of the volume going out. If you're talking we'll thousands, see. do you have any delay? Four two nine or something like that. Uh, I can I can check that for you because um, we do it in the uh, is it ever four two nine when you get um, you're you're over uh, your particular limits like um, so many per second and so many per minute and that kind of thing. Um, I can trap for that and. Um, you know, if we get that, put it back into uh, into its queue. We do it in all the other QuickBooks and Zero and so on and so forth. We put them in them. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks, Mark. I shall take a look at that. Okay. Thank you. But yeah, for, for the content, it should be yeah, should be simple. I'll play around. Um, I'll so probably have to have contact a, them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing I just did was literally just test time, so I knew it was a when I sent the message, I normally like to timestamp inside of the text. It's easier to trace. And then just a straightforward web address. Okay. Well, give it a try. Well, nice. Ken's got his hand up. Talk to me, Ken. Okay, Bruce. Ken, how's it going? Good. Got a net talk question. Oh, Rick's just saying, Go just first. for Ed there, Rick's just saying the short code. They are the five digits. That's what I was expecting short codes to be. It's where you, instead of you having a particular number, you know, you've heard them on the radio commercials where they go, you know, text win to 51222, that kind of stuff. And they're the short codes that I, well, that's out there in the UK anyway. Yeah, I think you're right, Andy. Uh, well, it's Ricky to point it out, but that's what I'd expect a short code to be. Mm -hmm. um, it could cost thousands as well to get them. Oh, boy. <laughs> you don't need them. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't need them. That's a phone number thing, not a yeah. message thing. Yeah. Okay. You want me to share my screen, Bruce? Uh, if you want, let's uh, make you a panelist. Are uh, you muted, Ken? Okay, I'm back. There you are. 
Okay. Can you see it? We can. Okay. What I've done, Bruce, is this is a server, and I'm assuming you can have more than one domain pointing to the same server, correct? Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm testing out the net talk on this server, and this is the address that's that I'm using for net talk. Right. Okay. And I've downloaded certificates. And they are in this folder here. Show me. Can you see them? Yeah, they're not there. You need a CRT, a CRT file and a key file. Okay. You so don't have the CRT file. When you say so I, downloaded, what do you mean by downloaded? I thought I clicked certificates and it put them in there, so obviously it didn't work. Yeah, let's go look at the log there, because it says ca root.pem is missing. Top side of the log. At, when you said a log, here? Right there, on the screen. That big text box at the bottom of the screen. No, on the settings screen. Here? Yeah. What does it say? It says, see, the root is missing. Right. So let's go to your network documentation. You mean the help documentation? That's the best kind. Okay. Interesting. I'm also seeing your firewall icon on your toolbar there. Could you click on that for me. And where Sorry, is that? Screen, screen is lagged. In your task, on your Windows toolbar at the bottom of your screen, between your Chrome icon and your server icon, there's a Windows firewall icon. Click on that icon for me. Oh, I'm that's what least. I don't. I don't see it, Bruce. All right. Unfortunately, your screen for me has stopped. I'm not seeing your documentation. Are you seeing the documentation? Yeah, the documentation is on my PC. Uh, this, I, I got what you're saying. You're seeing the server. You're okay. Seeing the well, bring server up window. bring up the network docs. Yeah, it's in your browser. Bring it up. Open up the browser. Okay. Go to capesoft.com. Okay. Okay. There's a link on the right hand side to the accessories. Go there. Go to network. Go to docs. Either one of these? Anyone will do. They go the same place. Okay. So you'll see there, right at the top. Uh, go to, go to, go to. Well, I'm just seeing what I think I should be seeing. Ah. Let's open up the index here. Yeah. yeah, scroll to the top of the index there. Oh, no, you haven't gone to the docs yet. Go to docs, sorry. OK. 
Okay. Okay. So it says deploying a TLS client or server. Click on that. Fifth one down in the index. Okay. All right. So those are the files you've got to deploy onto your server box. Uh, okay. The other document that, and the Visual Studio one's important as well. The other document that's going to be useful to you is uh, if you go back to the index. And you go to the web service section. NetTalk server? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, it's just laggy, so I'm waiting for it to catch up so I can see. Uh, scroll down. No, 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 in the docs. You're not in the docs again. Go back to the docs. Okay, I'm there. Go to the web server section there. There's a little button to your left. There. And then you'll see building secure TLS websites. There. So if you go into that, then this whole document explains how to get the certificates and what's going on and everything else. Okay. All right. I'll do some reading. Cool. But that log tells you what's wrong. So you just got to keep an eye on that text box. It'll tell you if there's a problem, like it did okay. now. Okay. All right. That's what I need. Thanks, Bruce. Cool. Pleasure. Right. Is that it? Is that That's all? It. That's it. That's a wrap. There's only well, there's only two questions left then, John. Two very, very important questions. Questions which up until now have, have been hovering there, waiting, waiting, waiting. The first question is what's happening? Listen carefully to the question, John, because the answer is important. What's okay. happening on Friday? Friday. I believe Wengel's doing a session. No, I believe Bruce is doing a session on NetTalk 14, not 13, because there is no 13. No, there was a 13 was 18 months ago. Didn't you get it? No, there was no 13. I'm not I'm not playing this <laughs> game with you, Bruce. I'm not playing this game today. That's the title today. of your of your that's the title, by the way, of the YouTube video. Um, um, <laughs> NetTalk 14, <laughs> not 13. Because there is no 13. There is no 13. There, there is no 13. Net Talk 14, Leapfrog Edition. <laughs> That's it. Because we go. can name it whatever we want edition. You're lucky, you're lucky I didn't call it the Net Talk 23. So. Why, why, why would I be lucky for that? Then you'd be on at least this 2023, you'd be on the year. I know, but then, think, then it gets oh, hard to do two years. major releases in the same calendar year. True. People get icky about that. Net Talk Arbitrary Edition. <laughs> you shouldn't be doing two major releases in a year anyway. That's, that's uh, bad luck, Bruce. That's bad luck. Yeah. Bad luck. Can't have that. Tell that. Tell that to the the Claren four, Claren five cycle, or five. Was it five, five, five? Claren five point five. Yeah, I don't know. There, there, they okay. can, they can pass. Anyway, that's happening on Friday. Net Talk fourteen will ship, and pre-orders are in fact open. Um and some people have gotten themselves ahead of the queue and got into that queue. 
And it looks like we should ship actually on Friday. I'm, I'm, I've been doing builds and tests and builds and tests and builds and tests. And so uh, there's every chance that the build will actually go out on Friday. Um, and then the release will be the webinar and we will talk about all things NetTalkie 14. But what's happening tomorrow, John? This is equally important. Well, hold on. There's there's a NetTalk 14 question for you. Mark Overton is asking. And somehow I, I think this is a bold question. He has the audacity to ask if, with the release of NetTalk 14, will the fourth edition of the PDF book, will it have been updated? At the same time, um, will your book be yeah. updated? On so Friday? I've got a question. I've got a question for Mark, which might answer to help him answer. So Mark, how many pages in the book? Have a quick look. How many pages are there in the book? Now you see, he's not. He's not answering. Well, I just, I just unmuted just him. Just pulled so him in. You know, I just unmuted him. Yeah, 432. Right. There you go. How, how long do you suppose it takes to go through a book like that and review it, review every paragraph, every sentence, make sure it's still perfectly accurate, redo all the screenshots, all that kind of thing? How long do you suppose that takes? Uh, 432 days. <laughs> it's so, a long time. A long time. So do you think I held back the Network 14 release while I did all of that? No, sir. There you go. I feel your question has been answered. It has been answered. Thanks. <laughs> I, I believe the book will be updated when NetTalk 16 is released. You will have <laughs> NetTalk 14 documentation. Okay. Oh, no, no. There's NetTalk 14 document to documentation. It's up to date. That's true. It's all on the internet, probably. Right. You, up, you updated the website, did you? Yeah. As, yeah. You, as you went. Yeah. Yeah. There's, look, I'm updating it all the time, but it's the, the 14 docs are up to date. That's there's no problem there. The um the book we'll get to it when we get to it. Yeah. It's all topical. Obviously, all the everything in the book is fine, but it just it, you when you can't do a new edition without going through it and it's uh, it's quite a lot of work. It's quite a lot of work. I think I think Bruce, you know, books are kind of outdated anyway. I think you should move to TikToks and just release little two or three minute TikToks. <laughs> Based six on little seconds. subjects. Six, six, yeah. six second TikTok sound. Yeah. Net talk in, in 60 po- seconds. Preferably, and just preferably on my phone in portrait room. At, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Dancing <laughs> on the side. Perfect. Yeah. With yeah. sped up music, uh, people singing. Yeah. It'd be perfect. I, f- I feel we could do that. I feel we could You got to get with the times. You got to get with the time. I know. What can you do? Um, get with the time. So then, what's happening tomorrow, John? Tomorrow is the last of a series of four training sessions for CIDC 2023 for NetTalk, which um, is supposed to be pretty good. What I've heard. So we we are <laughs> we are going to be doing the uh, deployment um, tomorrow. So we'll be looking at what Ken just struggled with, getting a certificate, how you get that, how you deploy your program, how you get your certificates. That includes intranet certificates as well as internet certificates. It includes getting certificates for machines that do not have port 80 open and all other kinds of fun stuff there as well. So that'll be happening in the CIDC training session tomorrow, the last of the online network training sessions before we start packing our bags for a flight which is now under a month away. There you go. We've officially crossed the month. In fact, today, 9th, uh, 9th of September, no, it's 11th. We start, when, when do we start, John? The 9th? 11th. When do we start? 11th. 11th to the 15th, 11th, yeah. 11th. 15th, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So by, uh, by Friday, we will be exactly one month away from opening day, but obviously I have to fly a few days early, so I'm already on my bike. <laughs> I think I've got four weeks today before I go. Something so like if for some reason you've been waiting to sign up for CIDC, the time for waiting has passed. It is time to act and sign up. It is. It is. <laughs> Stop it is. drumming your fingers in the table and make it happen. That's right. Like, oh, I meant to do that last month. 
this is this is last. This month. is the this last. Is, this is it. the last minute. You know, you know, is it the proverbial last minute? That's right. Yeah. So that's all I can say. <laughs> we hope you guys will sign up. This is going to be a really cool uh, conference. Mainly because I'll be doing I, a session this time. It's. I think everyone's <laughs> just waiting for me to do a session, and so right. uh, it's happening, right? Because because it no is. one demanded it. It's the thing that no one asked for, and it's happening this time. Some say, many say, it's the most sought after session. Many, many say. I've heard. I've heard many people say it. Yeah. So, yeah. Looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. A lot of work to do before then, but um, I plan to sleep when I get home. Like everybody uh -huh. here, including Mary, who you don't see, everyone here is doing a session. That's on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Danielle's got her hand up. She well, wants Danielle's to do a doing a session. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's talk to Danielle and see if she's doing a session. Danielle, are you that doing is a session? Wishful thinking, most certainly. <laughs> <laughs> I do have. I have another quick question. Yes. Go for your quick question. So I have done all the Q code necessary, like we discussed, um, and I have passed that parameter through to that, that JSON code through to my API. Um, and uh, now all the local variables that were there before the Q are coming in blank. So the Q is coming in, but the variables that I was passing with it are not coming in. How does that make you feel? Sad, of course. <laughs> no, I would expect them to come in if your JSON was set the way that second lot of JSON we saw, not the first lot, but the second lot. I'd expect them to come in. The debug view so. shows the variables are all blank. Hmm. Well, make sure you've got external names on all of them, but the external name not really matter. Make sure you've you've made them case sensitive with their tag names. I, otherwise, make an example. I would I would have to see. Okay, I'll do that. I can tell you, I'm not debugging it tomorrow or Friday. <laughs> Come on, Bruce. For reasons. For reasons. It's the middle of the night, isn't there? Yeah, I tell you, there's there's a lot to do before Friday. Tomorrow, not so much. Tomorrow, I've got figured out. But uh, Friday, uh, that's another story. All right, Daniel, but send it through. I will have a look at that. Thanks, guys. All right. Talk to me, John. Yes, well, I'm working on CIDC stuff taking care of the website, doing this and that. You know, last night I woke up at 2.30 in the morning and I started thinking about how the cameras were going to be placed in the conference room <laughs> and how the wires were going to be running to the switcher. And then I was like, I think I'm making it too complicated. And then I realized that I wasn't, that it had to be that complicated. It had to be that complicated. Yeah. An hour and a half later, I fell back asleep. So that's where we are now. In the, in the cycle, we're at the point where I wake up in the middle of the night, worry about things, and then go back to sleep. There we are. But I woke up in time for this, so that's good. So did you Talk. diagram it already, John? In my head. Uh, I, I have part of it diagrammed. Um, I started working on the diagram. I took last time's diagram and started deleting stuff, and then I'm adding them all back in. Well, as with all the wake up in the middle of the night, keep that notebook next to the bed so you can quick jot down those notes and get back to the I know, but then after. you look at it in the morning and you go, what? <laughs> what was <laughs> I talking at that point? <laughs> what? <laughs> what was I trying to say? I have no idea what this means. Oh. And I'll it's very something something makes exciting. Sense. Like, exciting for me. I'll tell you something exciting on my side. So, you know, the, you know, the, uh, our, our Pixio tracker right where you guys have to hold on to a little dongle thing and it, oh, it yeah. tracks it along and most of the time it works but sometimes it doesn't i replaced it i replaced it and i have three 
PTZ tracking cameras now, which has AI tracking in the lens. So it tracks your face. So you just walk up on stage and it will just track you as you're going back and forth. There's no dongle anymore, none of that stuff. And I can control it. If it gets out of hand, I can control it remotely with a little remote. You can box. control it now, John, but you realize you're just training our future AI overlords to track us when it comes time to mow us down. <laughs> well, to track you, yeah. <laughs> to track to track you guys. Yeah, well, I guess me now that I'm doing a session. But yeah, yeah you're right. That's happening. Yeah. But anyway, so this it's going to be uh, kind of cool. The little lens is just following you about and no more dongles and it should be accurate. I've tested it and it, it does a pretty good job as you're walking back mm. and forth. And this is yeah, all because of Bruce. a red dot in your forehead as you're moving around? Yeah, it's a red dot. <laughs> <laughs> that's the, that's the, I mean, I wouldn't have to do any of this if Bruce, you know, wasn't wandering around constantly. But you know, I just can't. Well, I just think can't, people can't who sit at their in. tables mm -hmm. make for boring presentations. You know. Yeah, that's true. That's why <laughs> you can anticipate mine being a so boring presentation. You, you are going to walk around, aren't you? You're going to learn. You're going to learn. I don't know. I walked around last at the at the uh, CIDC 2020. You did. I walked to the end of the stage and I walked back. And it was such a good looking stage. <laughs> it was a great stage. Anyway, so that's all happened. That's all all the stuff. Now I got to get it all set up and it's kind of cool. And and I'll say one more thing and then we when it, this is just stuff. But they're POE cameras. So everything runs over one Ethernet cable, including the video can run over the Ethernet cable. Mm -hmm. So I just oh, plug okay. in one cable and everything works. No more right. wall warts. That's nice. So how cool is that? Okay. And extension yeah. cords and blah, blah, blah. So how long is it going to take to set up? That's what I want to know. Yeah. I'm anticipating. <laughs> we're in the room at 9. 9.15. I reckon we're done, eh? John's leaving yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, we start set up at 9 Sunday morning. Yeah. I, I, I will be pretty much wrapped by, I think, 1 o'clock. That's my That's my uh, guess. Maybe even sooner. Oh, we spent hours with the former six cameras. cameras. I don't Say that again. One o'clock. That's four hours. Four hours. Well, that's pretty pretty uh, ambitious, but potentially doable. This is you remember it, it's on the North American side where we have sort of normal power and not the weird stuff they had in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. oh, what can you say? Okay, we got through it. What's the problem? Uh, well, was a look, challenge. I've looked well, back at gosh. issues we've had that have delayed us, and I think we've taken care of all of those different things. And it's simpler because we don't have Andy in a separate room, so we don't have two rooms to set up, just one. And I think we'll do uh, just fine. I think it'll be fine. Cool. Lovely. Good, good. But we do have some real fancy digital signing going up in the in the uh, outer room. Hmm. Very good. Very fancy. Cool. Just saying. <laughs> it's either very not fancy or it's really fancy. One of the It's two. really fancy. It's very, it's really cool, actually. So uh, it'll be a great time. What can I tell you? It's going to be a really cool time. Good sessions. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. Can't yeah. wait, I tell you. Well, right, I that's it. Go. We can wrap up. I need, we can wrap I need up. more time. I'm excited and terrified at the same time. Lovely. Well, have yourselves right, a fantastic you day. Sure. We'll see some of you tomorrow. We'll see some of you probably on Friday, and others will see anon. Do you guys want to do a quick uh, CIDC meeting after this? Sure, can do. Sure. Are you up for it? We can keep yeah, it very short. It's only nine hundred. Yeah. Let's do it. I think it's a good idea. <laughs> okay, we'll uh, we'll uh, hit it on Skype. Cool. Bye, everybody. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Bye, everybody. Uh, Thank you.